The only way to redemption is through faith, family, and freedom. And, and most of all, truth. Not lies based on the emoting of your perceived truth, my truth. No, there is the truth. The idea that the left feeds you, Taylor Swift, or people of, of your ilk, they're not going to help. They don't help, they don't create, they only destroy. Miss Americana, I watched yeah. it on Netflix last night, wow, and I wow. want to get into some details. Qu question for you, does it seem to you that, that Taylor Swift is, uh, she, her wokeness now is bad even by celebrity standards? Can you think <laughs> hard, of an, yeah. and here's the thing, I, I actually feel sad. I watched this film and I felt really sad uh, for Taylor Swift, and I want to know what you thought when you watched this. This is clearly someone who just discovered any woke ideology, but any kind of an ideology, yeah. and assumes that nobody else has known about this. <laughs> uh, the fact is, other people have, have looked into this, have studied this, have debated this for decades, and Taylor Swift, you just, you just didn't care. And <laughs> so it really is kind of sad to see yeah. someone who's been so misinformed who now fancies himself the, the arbiter of truth and women's rights when you mm -hmm. watch this film. And what really bothered me, I want to go through it, uh, it was kind of an entertaining film. We'll get to the fact that the person who made it is a radically uh, pro third trimester Ooh. abortion filmmaker. Most people don't wow. know that. But what bothered me was there, there were so many thoughtless answers that were stated by Taylor Swift in the absolute, which is really indicative of someone who's green and figuring out their worldview, which is somewhat scary because this person has an unbelievable uh, sphere of influence. So yeah. I think yeah. the first clip we have is Taylor Swift, if I'm not mistaken, her talking about deprogramming internal misogyny. Good. I'm trying to be as educated as possible on how to respect people, on how to deprogram the misogyny in my own brain, toss it out, reject it, and resist it. Like, there is no such thing as a slut. There is no such thing as a bitch. Hmm? Is there such thing as an mm. asshole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. What about someone who has sex with a lot of different people for, I don't know, let's say money or to advance their career? I'm not saying that about Taylor Swift. No, I really yeah, don't, think Taylor, I don't think Taylor Swift is a slut or a bitch. I want to be clear. But yeah. to say there's, like, it's a figment yeah. of your imagination? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been through a drive through <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't drop a corner yeah. without hitting a slut, a bitch, or an ass. That's all it is. They're in the so line. So it's just this idea. It sounds really introspective. Yeah. There's no such thing as a slut. There's no such mm. thing as a bitch. But we don't apply that to men because we also saw in this film where they referred to men, I don't know if she did, as pricks or as assholes, yeah. right, or as rubes. And by the way, I accept that some guys are and some women are. And I don't mean that that defines them in their right. entirety. But some women sometimes can act really bitchy. I mean, or can that's... sort of, you know, <laughs> slutty. <laughs> I think that it, the, the words wouldn't exist. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> we need you to define that. I don't know if that's someone being a slut or giving birth to like, it's a slut! <laughs> it's kind of like Shakira's performance oh. last night. Oh. Slut! Slut! Okay, so uh, here's something else too where she was talking about, again, another sort of facet of wokeness, and you see this, you just, in other words, when you see her making these statements, you know the blog that she just read. You're like, no, right, okay, no. I thought that in the eighth grade too when I had a feminist professor. I got it. Uh, here's one where she talks about apologizing. Sorry, that was a real soapbox. No, oh Why did God. I say sorry? Yeah, because it was annoying. Uh. <laughs> That's the thing, she goes, oh, why did I say sorry? Oh, I need to retrain myself. Oh, oh, that, okay, that's right, yeah. Because men never apologize. It's true. Right. That's just a female thing. This is all predicated is. on the idea. She makes all these statements in the absolute in the film, uh, in the absolute in this film, that uh, women were always trained to apologize. Well, if you did something wrong, for example, if a woman was acting like a <laughs> or a slut, maybe she says she's sorry. Because like, if a guy <laughs> was acting like an asshole or a prick, your word's not mine. Maybe he needs to say yes. he's sorry. But this Fine. idea that men just walk through life without ever having to apologize, again, some of these opinions will change for Taylor Swift, notably on this, that right. men don't apologize once she gets married ever. <laughs> It's it's yeah. not even a part, this is yeah. my part-time job. Yes. My full-time gig is just apologizing. Well, <laughs> I can see that. All right, and then uh, here we go. This is all, you know, this all sort of culminates in the film with her talking about uh, politics at length, which is, you know, something that's obviously um, raised a few eyebrows because she didn't use to be one of those people. A nice girl doesn't force their opinions on people. A nice girl smiles and waves and says thank you. A nice girl doesn't make people feel uncomfortable with her views. Yeah, what? but not only those things. Like a nice girl, sure, a nice girl smiles. Sure, a nice girl doesn't Waves. deliberately make people feel uncomfortable. No. But a nice girl can also still have strong opinions and do those things. 
It doesn't have to be either or. And, and by the way, she talks about this mm -hmm. in the film. She says, you know, I was told to shut up about politics as a woman. Well, what do you think, your male country stars? They were, they were told to be divisive about politics? Right. Yeah. You think they're being coached on how to cut their audience in half? Right, exactly. The Please, Dixie can chicks. someone Dixie Chicks me and yeah. run over my right, albums yeah. with a John Deere? That's it's exactly not exclusive right, yeah. to you because you're a woman. And that's the danger of someone who's coming into politics very late, hasn't thought about these things critically, has a huge sphere of influence and decides to go, all right, this is only happening because I'm a woman. No, 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 you've just been blissfully unaware of all these things for a very long time. True. Good men don't want women to experience most of the hardships that are described right. in the film anyway. Exactly. The eating disorder, we'll get into that. I understand that, and I don't want that for you, and I think Taylor Swift is a decent person. I just think she's very misguided, and I don't think this is something to celebrate. I think yeah. if this were a person who, if this were a person writing a paper in your college class, you'd give it an F and say, this is very shallow. <laughs> but instead, because it's a woman saying, I'm a woman giving my opinion, and if you judge me, it's only because I'm a woman, everyone goes, oh, oh this is great. We, we have to clap. It's it. not really true. And speaking of which, let's go to this next clip, which again makes me very sad, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, is this the one where Taylor Swift is talking about? Mm -hmm. By the way, any defenses yet? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> her music's great. Oh I like her music gosh. too. No. No, I, I, no. no. And I don't even mind that Boo. she's albino. No, no, no. But <laughs> I don't think that this is for lack of it. I think that uh, Taylor Swift, like most artists, is a very sensitive person, yeah. probably a very empathetic person, and just completely misinformed. But the problem that I see is her putting on armor where anyone, anytime somebody says, well, hold on a second, you may be wrong about that idea, it's your mansplaining. Anyone who uses words like patriarchy or mansplaining or trigger, unironically, doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the clip, which is very sad, of uh, Taylor Swift talking yeah. about. And I understand and I empathize with, with her, not that I've gone through this myself, but I do know women who have, um, body image and, and female body image issues. There's always some standard of beauty that you're not meeting. Because if you're thin enough, then you don't have that ass that everybody wants. But if you have enough weight on you to have an ass, then your stomach isn't flat enough. It's all just f***ing impossible. And hearing a portion of that, it's hard yeah. for your heart not to go out to mm -hmm. her, by the way. Uh, but talking as though this is something that we've talked about it only applies to women, right. like female body issues. Like, you know, I just can't believe people judge women in the way that, that men aren't judged. If you haven't seen the film, this is kind of an ongoing theme. Well, I know you know that's not true, Taylor Swift. How? I looked at your dating roster. <laughs> Taylor Lautner, Zac Efron, the Jonas Brothers, I don't know if right. it was all three or not, Jake Gyllenhaal, <laughs> Harry Styles. You don't live in a world where men don't have six packs. <laughs> For you, if a man is over a buck fifty, he's over the hill. Right, yeah. exactly. And something else that I think is important, the eating disorder, and she talks about this, that's not because of the patriarchy. Or I don't think that there were any straight men out there who would say, who would have told you, you know what, I think that Taylor Swift would be pretty if she lost about 20. Yeah. No, if right. anything, most men would say, I think she's cute, uh, she's a little thin. A lot of guys yeah. would say that, you know, Absolutely. and I thought that they were wrong. I thought that she was naturally thin, uh, having a mom who was naturally thin and used to get shamed by obese people, that she wasn't a real woman. I thought yeah. it wasn't my place to necessarily speak. Turns out, it wasn't nature, it was her actually starving herself. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that was because of magazines edited by gay entertainment industry elitists yeah. and female fashion icons, not straight men. Here's actually an exercise that you could do, uh, Taylor Swift, and I'm hoping that actually this, if she does watch this because she you does think she needs to be to very, exercise? She does seem to, no, no. What? what? You said you were defending her. You're just attacking me, and rightfully so. I deserve it. Um, <laughs> I don't pay nearly enough on retainer. Uh, she walks into these rooms. Let's say it's let's say it's the uh, the Grammys or whatever it is, or the VMAs, right. or let's it's the Met Gala. Okay, Taylor Swift. And I'm hoping this is helpful, and you actually listen to this because I know you're glued to your your phone screen. You've talked about that in the film, and you answer a lot to critics on social media, haters, I believe you call them. Um, and this is not what this is. I want you to look up. Uh, any of the scathing reviews of your outfits or your appearance at most of these galas or award ceremonies where you maybe even made some of these statements. Let's, let's just take the Met Gala. I'm pretty sure you went to the Met Gala. Find me a scathing review of your outfit or appearance at the Met Gala written by a straight male. You won't. You won't. Yeah, Guarantee you walk into that room yeah. at the VMAs. The It'd only people hard. who are going, she's wearing that. Uh, guess what? It's not the straight guy. He's going, I'd have sex with it. And then there goes another one. I'd have sex with that too. <laughs> We're not that hard to please. Yeah. And you're a very pretty woman. Yeah. Every man would say so. That's why they, when repeatedly asked, they vote you as sexiest, one of the sexiest women in yeah. the world in all your splendor, whether you're skinnier, whether you're thicker. So I want you to just understand sort of the, 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 the object of your ire here. It shouldn't be um, the villains who you're making them out to be. It's not straight white men. It's no. the people in your industry. And that's why you feel hollow and life may be as devoid of meaning. I really hope that 
someone around you helps you learn this and process this, let's go on to the next point where I think she's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, discussing, um, and, and rightfully so, the idea sort of, of of rape culture. So she starts off correct, and I do empathize with her. I'm so glad she won this court case. But then she makes another statement in the absolute that is factually incorrect. This picture shows the moment Mueller inappropriately grabbed her, putting his hand up her skirt. Oh, jeez. This had happened to me. We told his boss. They did an investigation. He got fired. Then he sued me for millions of dollars. So I countersued for one dollar. Something is different in my life, completely and unchangeably different since the sexual assault trial last year. Like, and no, no man in my organization or in my family will ever understand what that was like. Well, hold on a second. The, again, I understand that, and I'm glad that she won. You can see that course, picture. It's yeah. very, it's clear as day. No men have a problem with women coming forward, especially if there's evidence, and we often believe yeah. women in the absence of evidence. We're just saying that that shouldn't be uh, the system of law that we have. People still need to be innocent until proven guilty. But right, no yeah. man in your organization or family will ever know. No men get groped. No men get sexually assaulted. Hmm. Tell that to Terry Crews, or tell that to the men who make up the overwhelming statistic of rapes that occur. Men get raped more often if you include yeah. prison rape. And I know some people say, well, we shouldn't include prison rape. Well, you should, because men get sentenced and put in prison for the same crimes with more harsh sentencing than women. So it should be relevant. Someone, did we, yeah. what about Terry Crews? So I understand your point. Yes, women do need to be protected. That's the mansplaining. That's me being patronizing, and rightfully so. If I were your husband, if I were your, your brother, your father, or as I am with my wife, I am incredibly protective because I understand that as a woman, she is more physically vulnerable yeah. than a man. That's how straight men think. But then to use that and springboard into a false absolute statement that no man could ever know, no, that's incorrect. And it shows yeah. that you have a blind spot yeah. as to, um, I, I guess, the people with whom you might sort of find yourself empathetic. And uh, now this brings us to something more where she gets so out of her element. And I believe this was a race in Tennessee. It's um, uh, Blackburn, I yeah. think. Um, and this is where she came out and actually campaigned for the first time. Uh, or, or I don't even know if she endorsed a candidate officially, but I know she anti-endorsed. She condemned <laughs> uh, yeah. Blackburn the, the other way uh, and tossed her hat in the ring. Let's watch this. She thinks that, that if you're a gay couple, or even if you look like a gay couple, you should be allowed I think to it's Marsha Blackburn in Tennessee. kicked out yeah. the restaurant. It's really hmm? basic human rights, and it's right and wrong at this point. And I can't see another commercial and see her disguising these policies behind the words Tennessee Christian values. Those aren't Tennessee Christian values. If I get bad press for saying don't put a homophobic racist in office, then I get bad press for that. And she goes on to say mm -hmm. that uh, Marsha Blackburn that uh, uh, doesn't represent a single women's issue. Hold on. There are no women who are pro-life? What if you're mm -hmm. What if... What if Donald Trump isn't a homophobic racist? What if the finalists in Celebrity Apprentice were Cindy Lauper and Arsenio Hall? <laughs> what if this is a guy who has a long and storied history of employing and working with members of the LGBTQ AAIP yeah. in a silent number two and uh, has had a long history of working alongside black people in New York City? So what if you're wrong about that? Again, yeah. so many false statements, so many assumptions, and this is just someone who is shallow, who hasn't examined, who, who kind of froze in time. They talk about this. I think even Taylor oh, Swift yeah. talks about this in the film. They freeze in time. Uh, basically, they only reach the maturity that they reached before they became famous, hmm. but now think she has the inside track. And what hmm. I'm saying, Taylor, is, is you don't. You don't at all. And you're looking for happiness in all the wrong places. And now this whole idea of your truth, well, it's based on an emotive response, not on facts. Right. And I don't want you to take this as uh, a criticism against your womanhood. It's not that at all, I want you to become the woman who I think you can be, and it can be a formidable woman. Not that you already aren't. You, you are right now, but you know, you've backslid. She was shocked, Ugh. by the way, when Blackburn still won, and then uh, I, I, I believe, this was, yeah, after she had tweeted yeah. and Instagrammed against Blackburn, 50,000 new people registered to vote, and Blackburn still won. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. She gets to be Protective the first with female senator in Tennessee, and she's, a, she's Trump in a wig. She represents no female interests. Oh, that's mm -hmm. where it was. Yeah, no yeah. female uh, interests? Yeah, yeah, None? What about the babies who aren't killed? Right. It could, they could just as easily be represented by Governor Ralph Northam, right? Exactly. I'm not talking about blackface. I'm talking about abortion up until birth, oh. but a lot of scandals there. <laughs> Both are bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not Very quite bad. Trudeau, but, but he's getting the there. Same, yes. But I, I think that, uh, you know, I don't want to put words into any woman's mouth, but the idea that 
the uh, that the economy is not a, a women's issue. Right. Right. That yeah. the national Safety. security is, is not yeah. a women's why, why issue. Women why, why are women limited to these certain topics just because Taylor Swift right on her private jet? Gun? Yeah. Right. Any yeah. of those issues. I mean, those that that in and of itself is again back to that issue that she's not really diving to the into what these problems are and how they affect people who right. aren't flying around in ten million dollar private jets. Well, not, not only that, and let's remove the private jet thing. Is still, and I understand the point. It is a valid sure. point, but everyone's a hypocrite. But here, let's scale it back. Okay. Private jet, I understand your jet setting, you're going to tours all across the world, right? You're going to Europe and you're going to South America. Fine. You don't have to be in a Chevy, in, a, in the longest suburban edition you can find. <laughs> the entire film, by the way, would it be, a, and by the way, you don't have to have uh, basically infantrymen, an entire cavalcade of security right, as you yeah. do. Well, you know what? How about it's a women's issue because other women out there want a party that allows them to drive a safer, larger SUV. And since they can't afford security, they believe it's their issue as a woman to be able to protect their family, their own bodies yeah, exactly. with a firearm and their God-given right to self-preservation. Is that a women's issue? Because maybe you have a blind spot here because you have so many people serving you, and rightfully so, you're unbelievably talented, but yeah. how is that not a woman's issue? Maybe these women not only know more than you, maybe they have more life experience than you. And this is something that's important to 50,000 new people registered to vote. Here's the thing, more people registered because you sent out an Instagram message uh, and a tweet, and I sound sort of, an Instagram message, a post, I get it. You didn't direct know, message yes. to, right. to uh, 100 million people. But, <laughs> but the point that I'm making here is maybe people heard that and they like you in spite of your uninformed politics. Yeah. And they decided yeah. against you trying to basically affect a race where, let's be honest, you don't live in Tennessee anymore. You spend more time in New York. You've talked about that, at least up until recently. Right. So maybe people do know about this and you're not opening their eyes. Their eyes are open. And maybe some of them are saying, uh, she's so out of touch. She just doesn't understand why we would support Blackburn over a party that believes in abortion up until birth and open borders and taking away my right to protect myself. She maybe doesn't know that because of her armed security detail 24-7 right. and the fact that she gets carted around in in uh, Yukon Denali's. Well, God bless her whole, God bless her soul, but voting for the other guy. It My problem isn't side. with her as much as it is the industry that has created her, transformed her, and ultimately will ruin her. But we'll get back to that. This is uh, where she was talking about President Donald Trump, and they asked President Donald Trump about Taylor Swift endorsing anyone not named Trump. I think his answer was about as friendly as you can get, but here you go. What do you have to say to Taylor Swift now that she's in politics? Taylor Swift's jumping <laughs> Turns around. I love that. Okay, what did she say? She said she wants people to vote for Democrats. Let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now, okay? <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> and I look in the film, she's like, why did you so like it? Nice, yeah, I mean, it burns. It's so nice, but it burns. So nice of a burn. But that being said, I will, I'll give you this. You go, hmm. Why 25%? Yeah. <laughs> like, sure if you say 50% yeah. because she's liberal, but it's like, you pick 25%? Because he was thinking, I've got four of them in the Air Force yeah. One disc changer. I'm going to just take one of them out, but there's no way I can get rid of Taking the other one. I yeah. only use discs. That's why I have a 95 compact disc changer. I don't use MP3s. They can track you, folks. Uh, that and contrails. So, again, like, that couldn't be, and they tried to make a big thing about this in the film. Like, that was it funny. It couldn't be a guy who's being a yeah, little bit. Bit more. I mean, I That's assume that he probably has some family members who like Taylor Swift because that was positively mild. Yes. Thank, yeah. thank the Lord above that you don't have a nickname, Taylor Swift. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, she said worse things about Trump than he said that. Yeah. I mean, that's not even close. I don't care what is coming out of the mouth of Albino Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> um, that filthy could have been line so much more. worse. And, and they uh, didn't say that. And we do have to get. We're going to get to life advice here, and I know half Asian Bill will have to go. But something yeah. else that a lot of people That's don't right, realize yeah. when you watch this film, and it, 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 little kind of subtle things. All of the people criticizing Taylor Swift, the vast majority of them are Fox News. They don't show the MSNBC right. and the VMA and the uh, the E Hollywood. Who are these? Are the people who criticize her most sh in a most shallow fashion? If you go to right. Fox News, they might be saying like, "Oh, I don't think she should be talking about politics." But they just, it's just sort of a bait and switch that they pull a lot. It's a sleight of hand. Um, the film director, I believe her name is Lana, is it Lana Wilson? Mm -hmm. Lana Wilson. Lana Wilson. Yes. I looked in, she actually directed the film after Tiller, uh, promoting third trimester abortion clinics, yeah. by the way. What? Wow. Let's be really Disgusting. clear. I couldn't watch oh. all of it. Good um, Lord. and let me end it with this. If let's, let me assume that Taylor Swift or some of her fans might be watching this. And I, I by the way, I, I understand that Taylor Swift fans are more respectful than the fans of Cher. I am respectful. <laughs> The Cher fans, it's just a Not bunch respectful. of angry gay pride floats with people, t they're hopping yeah. off just to show you their Cher wall and try to yeah. dox you. That's I have true. never seen more, more vehement fans than Cher fans. It's 
crazy. I don't know why gays love Cher. Vicious. It must be the pageantry. It is. So, yes. Um, <laughs> pageantry. I got off track, but <laughs> I have bit. a bone to pick with Cher fans. <laughs> Um, I respect I someone that. like Taylor Swift. I respect you for, for being vulnerable, particularly in, in a film like this about, about uh, your issues, like e yeah. eating mm -hmm. disorder, she talks about. Or anytime people come out and they're, they're vulnerable about um, uh, things like depression or mental health, right? People talk about that a lot. But I, I want people to know this, and this is why I th thought that this was important to talk about. I talk about that on this show. I've talked about struggling with, with yeah. mental health issues. I've talked about you know not feeling very good about myself, getting bullied in high school. And the reason I do that is because... I want everyone out there, I want you and, and, and someone like Taylor Swift, I want you to know that the left doesn't have a monopoly on empathy or, or on the idea of dealing with mental health or hardships. Again, I have been depressed. I know what it's like for it to feel bleak or for you to feel suicidal, for you to feel like there's nothing going on. I know what it's like to wake up and, and, and feel the hopelessness of not wanting to face the day. And, and this is why I talk about all of the issues that we talk about in the show, because the only way to redemption is through faith, family, and freedom, and, and most of all, truth. Not yeah. lies based on the emoting of your perceived truth, my truth. No, there is the truth. And, and I'm here to tell you, people like Taylor Swift, because it's not just Taylor Swift, but there are people out there, and we saw this, we saw it with David Hogg, we saw it with, um, uh, we're gonna see it with Greta Thunberg. They chew up child stars and spit them out. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm here to tell you, the idea that the left feeds you Taylor Swift or people of, of your ilk, they're not going to help. They don't help. They don't create. They only destroy. They only kill. And, and, and Taylor Swift, you're experiencing this right now. This is what's so sad for me when I watch this video. You were unhappy, okay, because of the lies you embraced, not from Christian conservatism, but from progressive feminist talking points. W women, in Taylor Swift, you're finding this out. You will not find self-worth in a career or independence from men any more than you'll find self-worth in that perfect bikini body. And to any minority groups or marginalized women or men out there for that matter, I guarantee you, okay, this is what's important to know. I guarantee you that if every single wall of systemic oppression, both real or imagined, were to come crumbling down tomorrow, it wouldn't make you any happier. It wouldn't make you any more fulfilled. Look, I don't espouse the ideas and values of, of, of Christ, of conservatism, of traditionalism, because I don't empathize with the downtrodden, the sad hearted, or the, or the misfits, the broken of spirit. I espouse them because I do. I espouse them because I am you, because I was that. You can be depressed, you can be a weirdo, you can be a freak, you can be a free spirit, and still find redemption in the truth. And as hard as that may be to swallow, you do need to recognize the fact that you can live your truth, but at some point it is going to come to a screeching halt when you go face first into the brick wall that is the truth. And I just hope that people like Taylor Swift and people who follow her out there, I hope that you realize this before all of a sudden you hit that brick wall and you're looking around wondering where all your friends went to because they're not gonna be there. Guess who I am? I'm Josh Hartnett. Bet you didn't think you'd see that face in a while. <laughs> uh, this is what we call an end card, which is where I tell you that you should subscribe if you like this video or click one of these other videos that you may like. Uh, hit the notification bell, of course, join Mug Club because that's what allows us to continue doing these videos. And just so you know, YouTube actually has uh, created a new policy where they might start outright banning channels that are no longer commercially viable, which means that this is merely a figment of your imagination.